Hi, my name is India Freeman, and I was sexually assaulted the night of my homecoming. I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. I grew up with my mom. I was close with my dad, but he wasn't a part of the family. I did dancing and modeling, and I loved to sing. In high school, I started doing cheerleading, and I just loved cheerleading. It just made me happy. So the way the incident happened, I had this friend that I grew up with. She's a few years older than me. I was like her little sister, like my mom would give her money, take her to school, take her to work. So she had a birthday party at her house and she was gonna have a game night with her friends and I was gonna come and it was gonna be fine. And one of her friends I met before. So I was like, okay, at least I know somebody there. So um, the day that the party was on was also my 11th grade homecoming. So um, I went to homecoming and I went out to eat with a couple friends. And then my mom took me over and I went. And the first thing I noticed, the friend that I knew wasn't there when she said she was going to be there. And so I was just like, okay. And everybody, they're like, 21 or 20 older so i was just like okay whatever i'm like hey how you guys doing saying hello everybody seems cool it was just these two particular people that just stuck out from the group it was about seven people there they just kept asking me questions i didn't think nothing of it and i was just having a good time and it was a guy and it was a girl and she was a part of the lgbt community they were cool because i was a part so i'm like all right cool so um the guy i'm thinking he's a part of the community because that's how he just came off after a while we were drinking i took about three shots and after that i just don't remember what happened I remember first waking up and I had like a panic attack. They had to take me out, carry me outside the patio to get some breath, some air. And then they took me back in. They took me to the bathroom in case I had to throw up or whatever. I blacked out again. So the party was in the living room. So, and I blacked out and I woke back up and I was in the living room, but it was dark. And it was only two people in there, the same two people that were asking me all these questions in the beginning. My friend wasn't in there. She was in her room. I can't even, I barely can move. I'm on the couch. I'm sitting on the girl's lap. And she has her hands in my pants. I'm just like literally just, I felt like paralyzed. Like I cannot move. Like I'm just like, Where's my friend? Where's my friend? And they're just like, oh, she's sleep. She's sleep. It's fine. Just laughing or carrying on. And I'm just, and I just was out of it. And I fell back and blacked out again. And then I woke up and I was on the floor with the guy. He was sitting on the floor and he was forcing me to perform, you know, and um, and the only reason he made me stop was because I threw up on him. And so he pushed me off and then I blanked out again. And I woke up and I was on the floor on my back, lying on the carpet. And I just felt something down. And then I blacked out again and I woke up the next morning 
in her room on the floor with my shorts next to me and a towel as a blanket. Mind you, I'm on the floor and she's in the bed with one of her other friends. And we all get up. And I just, that was like my first time getting drunk and whatever. So the hangover, the all the, you know, I'm just like thinking, what's going on? Was that a dream? Like, was this real? We all just sat in the living room. The other two people were still there. Of course, they spent the night. So I just sat there and was watching everybody just trying to like really get it in my head that that happened. She pointed out that somebody threw up in that spot and when I heard that it just was like oh my gosh like this really happened she made breakfast and whatever whatever said their goodbyes to the people everybody left and I told her to come here because I need to tell you that this happened last night and the response she gave to me was that didn't happen. You were probably dreaming. That wouldn't happen. I don't believe you. And I was looking at her in her face, in her eyes, crying, telling her. And she just pushing me away. Just, And it just made me realize, like, wow, like, this is a setup. Like, you, you don't care. After that, I texted my friends and told them, like, I think this happened and they were all freaking out and I didn't know what to do and so I called my cousin to come pick me up the whole way home in the car in my mind I'm just like tell her tell her tell her tell her and I just could not tell her and I went in the house and I went upstairs I went in the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I just started crying and I started to clean myself up, I guess, to make me not feel dirty. And so I started brushing my teeth. And you know how when you brush your tongue or whatever, so when I reached, it was hurting. It just made the realization even more true. And so after that, I was getting undressed because I was about to get in the shower and I noticed it was a um, scratch mark, like a long line under my breast. It just kept, you know, building up. Everything just kept building up. And I just got in the shower and cried in the shower. And after I got out, I just sat there my mom wasn't home yet, and that whole day, I was just thinking of what to do. And it was on a Sunday, so I had school the next day. So I just knew it was going to be hard, but I decided to just keep it in. And so I went to school. When I got to my class, the first class, I just could not. I kept leaving, going to the bathroom. My friends came in and I was in a college, early college program. So we were at um, a community college for our classes. And so the rest of the day, we just took off and went to the library area where you can get a study room. So we just did that for the rest of the day. They just tried to cheer me up and tell me what to do. And so I went home and I finally made up my mind to just tell somebody and I was just like who can I tell because I can't tell my mom this like I just I can't so I called my aunt to come over and she ran right over I couldn't tell her to her face I just hugged her she just hugged me and I just told her and she just started freaking out she started crying she tried to keep calm but um, she called the police and she called my mom to come home because she was at work. She told her to come home first. And so the police got there and I told them what happened. 
and they were like, we're going to take you to go get a kit, a rape kit from the hospital. But we were waiting for my mom. So my aunt went outside and I just knew she told her because all I heard was screaming. Like my mom was just screaming to the top of her lungs, just saying, why, why, no, what happened? Like, well, she came in the house, she came to me, of course, and just was comforting me and just asking me what happened, you know? And so she called my friend's mother and she told her what happened. She said, oh, okay, I'm so sorry. I'm about to call her right now. I'll call you back never called ever again it was no apology to me they never came to me not to jump through the story but when i graduated she um commented under my picture it made me so mad so i texted her in the messages and was just like how are you gonna try to congratulate me and you all this happened and she just was denying the whole story and it just pissed me off but I couldn't do anything, so I just left it alone. Anyway, so um, we went to the hospital, and they took a blood test. They took, you know, all the little tests. And because I took a shower, they couldn't find anything. We went to the um, police station after, and they said they talked to me about it more. And they said they were going to talk to them and then they'll come back. And then that at the end of the outcome, they said, well, basically, we're not going to take your case because it's six of you and against a 16 year old. And I just didn't understand that because they could have charged them with anything else with the alcohol given to a minor and they didn't do nothing. And another thing. It was crazy because there was a video of the girl who was supposedly my friend who had the hosted the party. Um, she was recording me and I'm just like, oh, give me something else to drink because I'm intoxicated. You know, I'm young. I shouldn't be drinking at this time anyway, but... Yes, yeah, so, and she's like, no, I'm giving you water, of course, in the video. So every video that they have just shows that it didn't happen. The case was thrown out, and I tried to reopen it last year, and they said the same thing, like, it's nothing we can do because you don't have any proof. One of my family members, friends, it happened to them with the same guy that did it to me. So she's not comfortable yet to speak out and I'm not gonna push her to do that. My incident happened um, 2019 in October, I think it was the 21st. And over the years, like now, I feel like I have grown a lot from this. I used to get a lot of triggers, the R word, or, you know, like different things like that. But now I can say it, I can talk about it without as much, you know, pain, even though it's still there. I was given this journal and ever since then, I've just been writing every single day. Some days, of course, I miss it, but I'll write when I can, how I feel. Putting it down, just expressing it, it kind of helps. And you can read back from where you were and be like, wow, like, this is great now. Also, just being around the support system that I have, like, my support system is very strong. My partner, my father, my partner's mom, her family, like, everybody is just so nice and they treat me well, like I'm one of theirs. My father, he helped us basically get this apartment and then her family just been helping us so well. As of now, uh, me and my mom, 
we aren't really as close because of, you know, issues because um, I came out and I have a girlfriend. It started before the incident even happened. When I first got to high school in ninth grade, that's when I met my partner and she found out and she's, you know, very religious. So she wasn't having it. You know, she made a whole scene. She called the school. It was just bad and it got me so depressed and I had to end my relationship a couple of times because of that. And that's when, when the incident happened, but we were still close friends. But after the incident happened, me and my partner got back and she found out and it just got bad. In April, it was close to my birthday and I wanted to have like this like hotel party or something like that. And she had an attitude for some reason and asked me, you want to have um, your little, you know, gay friends there and y'all going to be kissing on each other and all that? She called me faggot. At this point, you're getting disrespectful. Like, you're not even treating me like your child. I told her that because my depression was bad at the time because of her, and I told her how I felt that I wanted to, you know, do something that I didn't want to do. And she pushed me and kicked me out the house. She didn't hug me. She didn't say, she didn't come for me at that moment, nothing. She just kicked me out. My partner's mom was so gracious and let me stay with her. And she has other kids. So it was just like, wow, like, thank you so much. And that was, like I said, in 2021, last year, me and my girlfriend were in this really bad accident where um, we were on the highway and we flipped off the bridge, off the highway bridge. And I just called my mom. We weren't really close at the time, but I called her because, you know, I wanted her to make sure I'm going to the hospital. And so she went with me to the hospital and I was on the phone with my dad. And she just seemed so like angry that I was on the phone with my father. And then I got on the phone with my girlfriend because we were in different rooms. And she was just like, you need to get off the phone. I'm here. I'm sitting right here. You need to talk to me. And I'm just like, she really drove me crazy. But as of now, not talking to her, it hurts me so bad, of course, because that's my mom. We were best friends. But at the same time, I'm happy that I don't have that negative energy around me anymore. I love my girlfriend like so much. She, when I tell you, is the biggest supporter, like stuck with me through all of this, all of this craziness, everything. Whenever I'm sad, she'll always do something. She is the chef, so she'll make me some food, some good food out of nothing. And I just love her. We've been together for four years now so I have no idea with the two um, people I don't know what their history is except for that one you know incident I haven't heard from them I haven't seen them so I don't have any idea what's going on I want you guys to take the good thing out of it the lesson out of it you know just take your time write down your feelings like I said with my journal that I still have it's sparkly too so you can get a pretty pretty one write things down watch funny things listen to music go outside and just sit and take some fresh air in like just do little things you know and just find or keep your good support system